Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chatterbox Radio Show. My name is Jason Downey. And I'm Stephen Blower. Steve, how are you doing today? Let me tell you. So, what are we going to talk about today? Um, well, we did the whiskey taste test, and we've got nothing else to taste, but I thought that we could sort of compare things, uh, cultural things in Japan with cultural things in Scotland. For example, uh, traditional Japanese and Scottish dress. Okay, so Japan, I guess we're talking about kimono. Yep, the kimonos, um, stuff like that, the full body uh, sort of robe that you tie with the obi in the middle. Um, and of course, if we think of Scottish traditional dress, we think of... The kilt. That's right. Have you ever, being from England, have you ever had occasion to wear a kilt? Uh, I haven't. Um, I do have a, a, a plaid tie. Okay, okay, so we're halfway there. Quite, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I quite like the, uh, the traditional tartan. And actually, uh, it's pretty popular in Japan now, right? Is it? The um, it's been taken up by some of the schools for their uniforms. Oh, okay. uh, you see the girls wearing sort of the tartan skirts oh, and that's boys true. in that's tartan true. trousers. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think uh, possibly because it doesn't show the dirt too easily. Oh, okay. Obviously, plain colours tend to uh, show the dirt, whereas yeah. the tartan. Yeah. I guess interesting thing about the kilt is the men are reputed not to wear anything underneath they go commando yes which sounds incredibly comfortable um i uh i love wearing uh yukata japanese sort of yukata in the summer festivals and the very first time that i wore one i thought that it would be okay to sort of do the same thing go commando not okay not not no. designed for um for for Sort You're not going to tell me that the, the sort of crossover flaps at the front of your <gasps> yukata came apart? They Not while I was walking, but if you sit down, there's no way to uh, stop that from happening. So I did a lot of standing that night. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're getting into a little too much detail there. Let's move on. Um, I guess if you think of Scotland, you're going to think of haggis. Haggis. Yeah. The old haggis. Why don't, for our listeners who have been living under a rock, um, why don't you explain what uh, haggis is? Well, either under a rock or in Japan, I guess. <laughs> so haggis is a traditional Scottish dish. And forgive me, uh, any of you Scots who are watching if, watching if I get this wrong, but um, it's a sheep stomach, which is stuffed with other sheep parts, maybe kidneys and... The heart, I think. Heart, maybe, some sort of suet, so fat, Mm -hmm. and oats, and some onions, and some spices to give it a bit of flavor. And then it's boiled. Boiled, okay. I can't say that sounds very appetizing, but it does sound healthy, actually. Yeah, apart from all the fat in it, maybe, but... um, well, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're prepping for winter, right? Uh, even fat has its uses. That's true. And it is pretty cold in Scotland, I think. Yeah, I guess so. Um, on the Japanese side of the aisle, um, if we're talking about meat-based dishes that make me feel awful... Uh, was that a pun? Yeah. Did you like that? <laughs> it was awful. Uh, it was awful. <laughs> in, um, awful in, in Japanese is called hormon. Uh, in katakana, it's spelled around here-ish. Um, and that is, is it just one animal or lots of different kinds of animals? Uh, no, I think uh, you can get lots of different sheep, animals. Sheep, pigs, cows and that? Yeah, not so much in the sheep side. I mean, there's not a lot yeah. of sheep being eaten in Japan, That's but uh, pig and cow, yeah, certainly. And it's the intestines and various inner organs. You can also get heart and liver and I guess kidneys and that. Right, but of course the traditional way here is to grill it on a barbecue. Yes, yakiniku style, which is, you know, it's it's better for the person who just wants to try. I mean, haggis, it's it's a, you know, it's big enough to fit inside a sheep's stomach. Yep, but uh, I guess with the traditional hormon, you can just try a little bit of take a slice, grill intestine it up. or heart or down the hatch. So I, wh- why don't you like it? Like tell tell us a little bit. I mean, actually, I don't like it. What about you? No, not, no, not I, I I'm not a big awful fan. Whether it comes served wrapped in a sheep's stomach or 
<laughs> grilled in slices. Grilled in slices, yes. <laughs> Either way, uh, not a big fan of offal. In, in like, of course, there's also the, the, the intestines, the internal organs and stuff that you can have yakiniku style, but they also have uh, cartilage. What's that called in Japanese? Do you remember? Ah, uh, the cartilage, no. No. I'm sure. I have a word bubble animation I'll put up here right now. It'll, okay. So Steve does remember it, you can see. Um, yeah, I don't remember the name either, except I don't like it. Uh, do you like cartilage? Some people really dig it. Uh, no. Mm. Uh, in fact, pretty much any of the hormone I'm not a big fan of. Uh, I guess heart, maybe. I, I'm okay with heart. I can do heart. But they also have things like um, grilled pig uterus, which is meant to be... Yeah, I've had that before, to be honest. I've had uterus, I've had vulva, I've had all sorts of different Yeah, and I mean, they, they like it because it's crunchy and things like that. Um, Japanese are very big into their textures. Uh, I like the texture of meat. <laughs> I, I, I wish that I could eat hormone because it's uh it's cheaper than the premium cuts of meat that americans and english are used to and uh and it's got to be healthy i mean not like you know has it it's it, okay. it's not it's not health food i would say except um you know it's no worse for us than uh than the the, the other sort of stuff we're putting in our mouths yeah i'm not convinced but uh mm. Let's get away from that, get away from the food and get onto something more active. All right, traditional sports. Um, let's see. If we think about traditional sports in Japan, sumo comes to mind. Yep, I guess of traditional sports, yeah, we'll skip the baseball since it's not yeah, traditionally yeah. Japanese. It, it, is, it is incredibly popular out here, uh, as is judo, uh, which is traditionally Japanese. Yep, but um, sumo is around before that so and sumo is a sport where you try to throw very big men some distance outside of a circle whereas in Scotland they have a somewhat similar sport yeah the uh, traditional um, Scottish sports I guess like caber tossing what's a caber uh, it's like half a tree without <laughs> the branches Be because the Scottish just you can't be bothered throwing big men around. They have to go a level above that. Yep. So they, they like throwing trees and big rocks. That shot put? Uh, no, it's actually, I think, stone tossing. Uh, it's like uh, shot put, but with bigger stones. With bigger stones. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Stuff that you and I couldn't even lift. They're just tossing tens of meters. Yeah, and also um, like... Big sheaves of corn and stuff that are really? like corn straw, I think. Really? They, like they haystacks? Like, yeah, yeah. Big bales of hay they tie up together and I think they either just throw them over their shoulders the longest distance or up over a pole kind I, of height. I actually didn't know about that one. that one. That one sounds like a lot of fun. I used to like stack hay and stuff when I was a kid and like, I don't know, there's a, there's a different kind of... Uh, physics to it than like checking a rock right it yeah bounces. yeah I mean it gets bigger as well it's the thing about living lifting something that's big and square or mm. I don't know just the size of it makes it more awkward yeah yeah interesting so which do you prefer do you prefer would you rather go to the Highland Games or to a sumo match uh, I like watching sumo I can't say I've watched much um, you know traditional Highland games but uh, sumo is good fun I, I mean I do judo I'm into the martial arts and uh, yeah it's it's kind of artistic I, yeah I've been to a sumo uh, tournament before too and I had quite a good time I was surprised actually like how, how much fun it was even though the matches were only 10 15 seconds a piece on average uh, it was fun but I would like to go to the Highland Games someday because there's such a mystique around them yeah yeah or of course uh, a sport that's incredibly popular both in Scotland and Japan excepting soccer is uh, the Scottish born game of golf yep yeah it's it's very very big in Japan um, not so much these days but in the 80s during the boom when everybody could afford to uh, spend their money on golf clubs and mm. uh, going to the driving ranges uh, probably not so popular in uh, Scotland but in Japan we have like uh, three or four story driving ranges where there are people all lined up next to each other and you just tee off balls all day you know I just thought of this now but uh, last year when I was living in the mountains in Nagano, I was really confused about the number of golf courses there, big ones and expensive. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I was thinking, you know, in, in the Tokyo area where we are, it's flat. So it seems like this would be the place to have a bunch of golf courses. And they have a couple. But now that I think of it, yeah, golf was invented in Scotland, which is not known for its... its uh, Flatness. Its planes. Yeah. So maybe there's something to that. Next, traditional instruments. Now for this, I think we're going to have to listen to a couple of uh, samples. Okay. For traditional Japanese music, there's a number of instruments to choose from, but I chose the shamisen, and so uh, I guess we can um, listen. What's the feeling you're getting from this? Sounds very philosophical to me. Yeah, I quite like this. It's like a tuneless guitar. <laughs> But I, I actually do quite like Shamisen. They have some... There's a, a, a group called the Yoshida Brothers. Mm -hmm. um, they're still relatively young, 30s or 40s. And they play like modern Shamisen music. Just these three th string guitars, but they make some pretty cool music out of it. Hmm. Okay, so this is the Shamisen. Okay. And, and we're uh, contrasting this with? With... What do you think we're contrasting it with? If we're talking Scotland, then we're talking bagpipes. We're talking bagpipes. Bag it away. Do you like bagpipe music? Do you want me to be honest? Yes. No. <laughs> I... You know, I, I wouldn't listen to it on my way to work, but... I, I, I like bagpipe music. It sounds sad to me, which is poetic, I guess, in a way. I mean, it's hard to describe because it's music, but... Okay. Yeah, I mean, it does have a sort of melancholy about it. Yeah. It makes me depressed, yeah. I <laughs> mean, sad for different reasons. It's, it's, not, it's not a lot of fun to watch somebody play. It looks quite painful, but... I, I dig it. So which, which, which would you uh, choose to go to if a concert were being held in, in Moria? Um, again, I, I think I have to go with the, uh, the shamisen. Shamisen. Yeah, especially if it was the uh, more modern style shamisen. You know, actually, I would too, I think. I think if I had to go to a concert, I would go to a shamisen. If I had to go to a bar... I would I would choose a shamisen because in Kyoto, right, uh, the geisha are famous for being mm -hmm. uh, being able to play the the shamisen. Um, but if I were to go to like uh, a festival, you know, outdoor or something like that, then the bagpipe all the way. The bagpipe, <laughs> even though it doesn't sound like it, it's a party instrument. Yeah, you can have yeah. a party with a bagpipe. Yeah, I think outside you might be right. Mm -hmm. Shamisen is not really an outdoor have fun instrument, is it? No, it's no. It's a sit down, and, sit down and serious listen. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, something that you can do outdoors, though, is get your dance on. Uh, so we have a video here of traditional Scottish and traditional Japanese dance. Now, what's the Scottish traditional dance called? Uh, the Highland Reel, I guess, would be the one to go for. All right, so I've got a... a video here of the Highland Reel. Let's take a look at that. You can see it at the bottom of your screen. They've got their, um, I guess those aren't kilts, unless they are. No, oh, they're kilts. Um, it looks quite complex, right? Actually, these are young ladies. Okay. On the smaller size there, I thought they were guys dancing, but... Uh, oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah, well, they've all got their hair tied up, so it's hard to see. <gasps> oh, that's true, that's true. Um, Looks like it's gonna hurt their knees. I guess, uh, what's that Irish dance called that kills the dancer's knees by the time they're 25? Step, no. The river dance? Thing? River dance, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. This, this isn't quite as intense as river dance. He's got some good moves, right? Yeah, yeah. Looks like you can have a nice little party that way. All right, so now let's listen to, let's watch uh, the Japanese dance. Oh. Bonodori. Bonodori. Yeah. Bon for Obon, I guess, that yeah. holiday, and Dori for dance. A little bit more sedate? Yeah, I was going to say refined, but sedate seems to be the word. And, uh, well, the practitioners here look a little older. Mm. Yeah, the steps are a little bit slower. 
This, this seems like a dance that I could actually do, whether or not I were drunk. Whereas the Scottish, uh, uh, the Scottish dance, no amount of practice would let me dance, uh, jump as gracefully as that. But I think I would prefer to do the Scottish dance to this. Re well, ah, okay, if you had to practice? Um, even if I didn't have to practice, maybe if they just said, come on, join in, I I'd be more up for the Scottish, the Highland Reel, I think. Uh, more fun. Uh, it does look lively. fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit jealous because there's no, there's like, we chose these things because they came to our minds so easily. Like, uh, I don't know about England, but in America, like, traditional dress, traditional weird food, sports, instruments, dance, for me, they're not worth talking about because, um, uh, like, they're not just normal to me because I grew up with them, except they're marketed all over the world as, as sort of standards, so there's yeah. no surprise in them. Yeah, even in uh, you know Great Britain, we don't really have a sort of traditional dress that we can point at and say, yep, that's what we wear when we go to, I don't know, Scottish reels, and we don't have uh, that sort of thing. And even foods and stuff, you know, like roast beef or fish and chips, it's just standard fare. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Um slightly exotic in America, very exotic in Japan, but um, it's no haggis, I think we can say. Mm, mm. Uh, so, Scotland, thank you for having such an interesting culture. You might be a little more defined uh, tomorrow if you vote yes on your referendum. And if you have, uh, wherever you're from in the world, if you have some interesting traditional dishes that contain maybe offal or um, interesting heavyweight sports or musical instruments, then you can always put them down in the comments. We won't try them, but you can tell us about them. We'd be interested. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you for joining us. Join us tomorrow where we will maybe report on the results of the independence referendum 2014 if other more professional media outlets report on it before us for us to check uh this has been jason downey and stephen blower for chatterbox radio show thank you very much and have a good day see you next time